5 seconds to go. Start. Unfortunately, the proper development of affiliated colleges has not received the attention it deserves. The vast majority of them is in the private sector and is subject to its strengths as well as weaknesses. While some colleges in metropolitan areas are very big, about 45 percent have an enrollment of less than 500. As higher education is spreading to rural areas, the proportion of such institutions is tending to grow. As in size, they also show a very wide range in quality. Many of these institutions have low standards due to poor facilities and mediocre staff, while some are outstanding institutions which can compare favorably with university departments. Their finances are often unsatisfactory, especially because the grants in aid systems are generally out of date and often badly administered. The university is responsible for their academic standards, while the state government are responsible for their grants in aid. The dichotomy also adds to their difficulties, especially because the close collaboration needed between the two is sometimes absent. Added to all this, there is often an unhealthy rivalry between university departments and affiliated colleges or between the colleges themselves. I am of the view that in the larger interests of improving standards in higher education, it is necessary to concentrate for the next 5 to 10 years on improving the quality of affiliated colleges. Several measures will have to be taken to this end. The location of colleges will have to be carefully planned so as to avoid the creation of small institutions which tend to be uneconomic and inefficient. Our attempt should be to ensure that within about five years or so of its establishment, each college must have an enrollment of not less than 500. The courses to be provided in colleges should be carefully coordinated, especially where a town or city has more than one college. Intensive programs of in-service education through summer institutes and other means should be developed for the staff affiliated colleges. The system of grants in aid should be liberalized so that the colleges can afford to have adequate staff of high quality as well as good teaching facilities. The universities should strive to assist the colleges to supplement their facilities through common programs and a much closer liaison should be built up between the universities and state governments in a common program to improve standards of colleges in the country. Delhi provide, I think, a good example of what the close collaboration between a university and its colleges should be. All colleges including those set up by government are under the control of their own autonomous bodies. The remuneration qualifications of teachers in the colleges and university is the same and methods of recruitment are similar. The teaching programs are very well coordinated. The grants in aid is liberal and is given by the university grants commission on the recommendation of the university. The results of this approach have been outstanding 
and the Delhi colleges have given a much better account of themselves than in many other areas. It would be a good thing if the Delhi model is adopted elsewhere also in other metropolitan areas and big cities in the first instance and then generalized to other areas in the light of experience gained. It would be untrue to my part as a university man if I did not share with you some of my ideas about the chief concerns of a college as a center of higher education in its educational work. The first thing that comes to my mind is its concern for the individual and the spiritual. This may sound a little out of fashion, but I feel it is a vital concern. There is a dangerous tendency to neglect the things of the spirit in the overemphasis on material welfare. The final justification of education is an enrichment of life for individual human beings and the full development of their spiritual potentialities. Whatever else the college may or may not do education in this sense should be its first concern. Its second main concern should therefore be to organize its work as to make the realization of this educational aim possible. This implies mediation between the subjective mind of the educant and the objective mind concretized in the manifold goods of culture mediation that is between the individual student and his culture between him and the science, the arts, the techniques, the religious, the moral and legal codes, the social forms, the institutions, the personalities in which human culture is embodied, stored as it were. But every mind cannot get its nourishment indifferently from any goods of culture. There must be a correspondence between the mind to be educated and the mind embodied in the goods of culture. The good college can never do too much to initiate the student into the process of the self-discovery of his inclinations and aptitudes and to see that the goods of culture selected to educate him correspond to his mental relief which is good for future stock.